you can see that I'm currently playing Free Fire on my old laptop with 60 plus FPS. So, friends, as you saw at the beginning of the video that today, we will run Free Fire on Phoenix OS ROG version. But before that, let me tell you a little about this OS. This version of Phoenix OS is basically a modified version developed by a YouTuber, and there are quite a few tutorials about it. But no one has tried Free Fire or PUBG on this OS so far. But in today's video, I will show you the complete installation of this OS and, along with that, I will use a trick to install Free Fire without any errors. Now, what is that trick? You will find out at the end of the video. But before that, let's talk about the minimum system requirements for this OS. To run this OS, you need a minimum of 2 GB of RAM and at least a basic graphics adapter. So, let's stop talking now and let's move on to the computer screen where I will guide you through the rest of the process. Let's roll. Firstly, let me show you the system specs to avoid any doubts later that the video is fake. Look, my PC is only 2 GB of RAM and a 2.40 GHz processor. You can also see that my PC has an Intel HD graphics card, which is not very useful. So, let's move on to the installation process now. When you visit my website for downloading, you'll see an interface like this. Here, you'll find several download links, but you only need to download the one that is suitable for your PC. For example, my PC is 32-bit and low-end. I'll download this one. If my PC were high-end, I'd install the latest version. So, you need to download according to your specifications. Otherwise, if you try to install a high-end version on a low-end PC, it won't install and it will get stuck on the detecting process. After downloading, you simply need to extract it. Once extraction is complete, you'll see a folder containing three subfolders. One folder will be for Grub2Win, the second one for ISO, and the third one will contain Disk Genius. Firstly, you need to install Disk Genius and Grub2Win. I've already installed both. If you're unsure how to install them, you can watch the tutorial provided in the description. After installing both, you need to navigate to the ISO folder and simply extract the ISO file. Keep in mind that the size of this file is quite large, so it may take some time to install. After extraction is complete, you simply need to open Disk Genius. Here, you'll select any one partition, keeping in mind that the selected partition should be completely empty. After selecting the partition, right-click on it and choose the Format option. In the file system, select EXT4 and in the volume label, type ROG in small words. After doing this, click on Format. Once the drive is completely formatted, you need to double-click on it to open it and then minimize Disk Genius. Now, you need to go back to the folder where you recently extracted the files. In this folder, you'll find a text document. Open this document and you'll see the folder name. I could have manually provided you with this name, but if you download a different variant of this operating system, the name might be different here. Simply copy this name from the document and then reopen Disk Genius. Here, you need to right-click and create a new folder, then paste the copied name into the folder's name. After that, you need to open this folder. Here, you'll need to create another new folder, and this time, you'll name it Data. After completing this step, you need to minimize Disk Genius and navigate back to the folder where you extracted the ISO. Here, you'll see several files. You need to copy these files. It's possible that you have multiple kernel files, especially if you're downloading a different variant. Copy all the kernel files along with these other files. Ensure that you only copy these specific files and not any others. Otherwise, you might encounter an error during boot. After copying these files, you need to drag and drop them into Disk Genius. The copying process will then start, and it may take 5 to 10 minutes to complete. A few moments later. Once this process is complete, you need to close Disk Genius, because our work with Disk Genius is now finished. Now, we will create a boot entry using Grub2Win. For this, you simply need to open Grub2Win and click on Manage Boot Menu. Here, you'll see an option called Custom Configuration. Click on it. After that, a pop-up will appear, and you need to click on it three times. On the right-hand side, you will see an option called Load Sample Code. Click on this option to load the sample code, then click on the Apply button to save it. Alright, friends, our work with Grub2Win is also now complete, and we will restart our PC. After restarting, you will see the boot menu, where you need to select Grub2 for Windows and press Enter. After that, 
press enter again, and then select the default kernel. If you encounter a kernel not found error here, or if it prompts you to set up the kernel, it means that you haven't copied the files correctly within Disk Genius, and there are still some files pending to be copied. Furthermore, if the operating system gets stuck at this point, it means that the variant you are trying to install is not suitable for your PC. In fact, I faced the same problem when I tried to install a latest variant. Now, the loading process has started, and it will take approximately 5 to 10 minutes to complete. 3.28 AM After this process is complete, you need to set it up just like you would set up a normal phone. Once the setup is done, you will be prompted to select a launcher. You can choose any launcher according to your preference and simply click on the Always button. So, friends, our OS has been successfully installed and it's running quite smoothly. First of all, let me show you the Wi-Fi connectivity because usually, in such types of OS Wi-Fi doesn't work properly. But here you can see that Wi-Fi is working perfectly fine. Talking about the Android version, like other OS in this OS as well, you will get to see Android 7. Besides that, you will also have access to an internal audio recorder for PUBG, a screen recorder, and along with that, you will also have access to Octopus Keymapper, which is a paid keymapping software. So basically, I really like the Phoenix OSROG version, and now we'll install Free Fire on it. But before that, we have to disable the Play Store, otherwise, it might cause issues during gaming. So, to install Free Fire, we'll need a USB because today, we're going to use a USB to install Free Fire. First, you need to return to your Windows environment and insert your USB drive into your PC. Then, you'll drag and drop the Free Fire a PKOBB file, and the file explorer a PK into the USB drive. After that, you'll restart Phoenix OS and open the USB drive as a portable storage. After opening the USB drive, you'll first install Free Fire and File Explorer. Once installed, you'll simply launch Free Fire, and as soon as you encounter an error, you'll close it. Then, you'll navigate to the File Explorer. Here, you'll find the USB option. Copy the Free Fire file and paste it into the main directory of Android. After launching Free Fire, if you encounter a black screen, don't worry. Simply close Free Fire and open it again, and your problem should be solved. Now, I've reached the login screen and I'll quickly log in. Inside the lobby, you can see there's absolutely no lag. I'm getting nearly 60 plus FP. Many people face a lot of problems regarding key mapping, especially sensitivity issues. But let me tell you, in this OS, you won't encounter any sensitivity-related problems, and your game will run perfectly. Besides, you'll find pre-built key mapping for almost all games in this OS, and you can also use a gamepad if you prefer. So, as you can see, the game is working perfectly, and I'm getting nearly 40 plus FPS. Although in the previous video, when I tried Free Fire on Abstergo OS, I was only getting around 10 to 12 FPS. Also, you can see that the key mapping is working perfectly, and I'm not facing any sensitivity-related issues either. I didn't just try Free Fire on this OSI, I also tested PUBG, and it was working quite smoothly as well. All right, we've reached the conclusion of the video, and if I were to give my review, I'd say that I like this OS quite a lot. I tested PUBG and Free Fire on it for about a week, and both were working perfectly. I also tried installing COD on this OS, but it kept crashing. Installing this OS might be a bit challenging, but if you're looking for an OS that's super easy to install, then click on the upcoming video on the screen, and I'll meet you there. Bye!